Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, is now out in theaters and has really good ratings on Rotten Tomatoes and also on Letterboxd. In fact, on Letterboxd, this has an average rating of 4 out of 5. And I have to tell you guys that I completely disagree. As the world fell, young Furiosa is snatched from the green place of many mothers and falls into the hands of great biker Horde led by the warlord. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across a citadel presided over by the Morton Joe. The film stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, and many more, and was directed by George Miller, and he's done all the Mad Max films, and also the film 3,000 Years of Longing. Going into Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, before I even checked out this film, I did check out the trailer, and the first thing that came to mind was, wow, that green screen looks absolutely awful. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to see this, because it looks really fake. Now, up to that point, I had not seen any Mad Max films. However, before I went to go check out this film, I did check out the Mad Max films. The only one that I have not seen is the first one. I wanted to see what the lore was about. I just wanted to see, you know, what makes these movies so great? Why do people actually like these movies? So after checking out all those movies and going to see Furiosa, the positives that I can take away from this film is when there's action in this, I think it is entertaining. I don't think that there's always action always kind of coming about in this film. The world building, the visuals, they're very cool to look at. I love the chaotic nature. I love that the resources, they're kind of low. You have the Citadel and you have all these different leaders that are there. You have one guy that's actually trying to breed women and actually trying to have a son. And you just have a really cool visual style of apocalyptic nature where you have the poor people that need certain resources. There's lack of certain resources. And there's just a lot of chaos that really is ensuing within this whole vibrant setting. The sound here is also really good. I didn't see this in Dolby or IMAX. I actually just saw this in a regular theater and I thought that the sound was really good. You know, I could hear the rumbling of the trucks and the vehicles and just the music and everything. It was just really well done. So I can imagine if you saw this in Dolby and IMAX, it definitely would have been a step up in those kinds of theaters. It's a very uneven and messy film. The character development is definitely not there. You have Anya Taylor-Joy's character who has a plot point of the fact that her mother was killed and they show her character, mainly her younger character, for about the first hour of the film. Anya Taylor-Joy, she appears on screen and she doesn't talk for about another 20 to 30 minutes. So you don't even hear any type of lines from her until about an hour and a half into the film and it's a two and a half hour film. Chris Hemsworth, I thought his character was really loud and he tried to evoke authority, but I felt like his character was very uninteresting. I thought the nose that he had was very distracting throughout this film. And I just felt like he just didn't have anything where I was like oh man he's very menacing you know I'd watch out for him I just felt like he was just kind of there there was a part two where you see in the trailer where he is hanging off a ledge and you see the lava down below and I was like man that green screen is just really bad you also see some parts in here where characters are driving a vehicle and you can tell they're on a green screen it just looks so fake the action itself that is what these films are known for and I felt like when the action is done here I don't think it was bad I was entertained in that aspect but I just think the action was too far and few between and the pacing I mean I felt the pacing in this film throughout I felt like there was a lot of times where we have a lot of dialogue where nothing is really developing and that's one of the things that is a problem in this film as well because a lot of the stuff that is going on in this film you already know what happens because you saw Fury Road it's a prequel nothing you are actually learning new here it's all stuff we have heard before so that makes the film uninteresting it also lacks a lot of style there's no cool cars or cool wardrobes in each film i feel like there is something very memorable in the wardrobe and just the style of it for instance in fury road they have the guitar guy they also have some really cool chase scenes you have all the women that are in the car with mad max you have a lot of cool action scenes like for instance when you have the rocks actually tumbling 
tumbling down in Beyond the Thunderdome. I really don't like that film that much, but in the first hour of that film, it has the cool cage and the fighting and everything, and just the style and just a lot of the different characters are very unique within that film. And then the second film, there's really cool car chase scenes. This doesn't have any of that in this. It feels very bland at points. I just felt like there wasn't really anything really memorable in the vehicles themselves. You know, you have one scene where there is some stuff really blowing up and, you know, that's really cool and everything, but I just feel like there's just not enough of it. I feel like a lot of the stuff that happens in this film, it feels like it's very low stakes. It just feels like a film that is just being made to have the Mad Max name but not really have much of a story. There is a lack of plot, which I think every single one of these movies, they all share characteristics of having no plot, no character development, and everything they are known for is action. So if you don't have any of those other characteristics in your films, you got to have action to actually make it entertaining. And lastly, the third act. The third act to me was just so disappointing because throughout this film, it's Furiosa wanting to get her revenge on Chris Hemsworth's character. And by the time this film wraps up, it wraps up in a way to where it relates to the fact that she is Princess Peach in Mario. And I was like, wow, how ironic that, you know, that is the ending of this film. But I was just like, wow, we did all this for just this in the end. And also her mechanical bionic arm that she had. I was like, man, they could have did something really cool with that. But they didn't do a damn thing. And I was just like, wow, very disappointing, very underwhelming. And as far as the score for this film, though, I would give it a two out of five because it's just it's not a film that I really enjoyed, to be honest. The pacing, I really felt it. I felt like it really lacked the action. There's no plot. There's no character development. If it doesn't have any of those things, I don't know how it can be a good film. So all these four and five stars, you know, to each their own that really love this, but I cannot get into this. I just cannot give it a good score. I would love to. I really love Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she's a great actress. But here, I just don't know why she technically is Furiosa. I mean, Charlize Theron, she could have reprised this role unless she turned it down or just wasn't interested in doing it. I don't really think it makes that much sense. I don't think Anya Taylor-Joy was bad or anything. I mean, she didn't have to have really a lot of lines or really speak too much, mainly through facial expressions. But to me, it just didn't make sense that she was in this role to begin with. But those are my thoughts on Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Let me down in the comments what do you guys think about this film. I think most of you are going to say that you absolutely loved it and more power to you guys. For me, I just don't think this is a franchise that I'm really in a rush to revisit. If I did want to revisit any of the films, probably Fury Road and for the action only. Because for me, I need a little bit more substance. I need more dialogue. I need more character development. I need more plot. And these films, they just don't do it for me. Though the action is especially in Fury Road, is very good. So I remember a lot of things from that film, specifically mainly because of the action itself. And because the action is really good, maybe I would revisit it. But anything else on a technical level, it's just not there for me. So the franchise to me is just kind of a meh franchise overall. But thank you guys for watching this video. And I will see you guys next time. And if you guys want to go into a rabbit hole, check out my latest videos that I posted recently. See you guys next time.